Hi, it's me again with Corel Draw Tips and Tricks. And somebody sent me this seashell clip art, and I actually think it would trace pretty good. It'd be a lot easier, but she, they asked how you could draw it, and uh, you can tell if you don't have any artistic ability because I don't have any. And I could have, you know, there's some things I see now that I could have done differently. So how I did this, I just took a square holding down the control button, and then I rotated it. 45 degrees. And then I took an ellipse starting from that edge, holding down the control and the shift key. I'm going to get in a, a circle like that. So now I can take everything else away except for that item. Didn't really have to delete that because I could fill this in. But I'm going to set my nudge factor on, let's see, five. Anyway, then I've got that. Let me put that back. I'm going to left click on no fill, right click on outline. And they progressively get a little bit bigger. I did that, but I didn't slope. This really looks good. I, I think I would just trace it. But you might learn a few steps. And I'm going to go ahead and put this in the center of the page. Doesn't really matter, but I... I often find myself wanting to be in the center of the page. I'm going to take a two point line and go from that node, holding down the control button. So I'm right in the middle. And then I'm going to double click on it and I'm going to move the rotation to there and I'm going to rotate it five degrees. Then I'm going to duplicate it and I'm going to rotate it to negative five degrees. So I've got like a 10 degree. Now for just a second, I'm going to move these out of the way because they might get in the way of our other one. So we're going to make a line right there. Double click on it and put the rotation in. So this is basically 10 degrees. So we're going to make this first one seven. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring these back. And what if you didn't know what I was doing there, sometimes when you connect another line, it's going to connect those lines to those lines. So now I'm going to take the smart fill tool. I'm going to nudge it over. I got a little bit of a leak there because of the fact that my line probably isn't all the way up. So let's move it a little further. Take the smart fill tool and do that right there. Now I've got those two lines. I don't need this anymore, so I'm going to delete it. I'm going to nudge these back over to the center of the page. And there's probably a lot of ways to do this. This is just what came to my head and I'm going to left click, right click. <clears throat> and then I'm going to take this one and I'm going to control D and rotate it eight degrees. Whoop. I need to move the rotation to the, to the point. Rotate it eight degrees. See, we got a little gap. The next one I'm going to rotate. I'm going to control rotate it like 8.5. It might not have made a duplicate. It didn't. So control D. There we go. Now I can just do this all the way around. Now you see that they're not touching, but we want to progressively make them a little bit bigger. So we're going to just take the shape tool and move that one to the left, that one to the left, that one to the left. All I'm doing is just moving the nodes. And they're progressively a little bit bigger. It doesn't really matter. You could probably figure out a better way to do it. Now I'm going to take the three-point curve line. And I'm going to go from, let me zoom in. And this is what I really should have done earlier. After I saw the real shell. I'm going to go from lower, about right there to there. And then just kind of curve it up. And then I'm going to go just across and just curve it up a little bit, but maybe have a little bit more peak up in the middle or on one side. And see what I'm talking about? These lines are actually connecting together. And that's what I didn't want to happen when I was... Now, I missed one, so I can back up, get on that node. And then on this one, I guess we want to go kind of 
right in the middle. Now everything worked right, we could take our virtual segment delete key and delete these. And I'm gonna hit that right there. Now I'm gonna take the Smart Fill tool, fill that in and nudge it over. All I'm doing is sealing it up, welding it basically, and then I'm gonna left click, right click, and we're almost there. Now it's, because of the angle, we're a little bit off center, but it doesn't really matter. I'm gonna control G and group it, control D and duplicate it, and then using the control button to move this over. And you can see how far we off our center, but that doesn't really matter. So what I'm gonna do now, let me zoom in here a little bit. Take the pick tool, get my four point cross. And really we could leave it just like that. We've got two lines in the middle and they're a little bit off up top, but or we can move our center rotation to that center. And a lot of people don't realize you can do this. When you double click and you've got the rotation, you can grab, you don't have to grab these handles, you can actually grab like right there and make it snap to that note. Now our shell is a little bit off and we've got two centers. I'm gonna control G and group it. I'm gonna center, make the center of rotation in the center and I'm just gonna kind of visually get it even. That doesn't look half bad if I do say so myself for so quick. Make it something other than a hairline Scale with object in case you make it bigger. And that does look quite a bit bigger, better. Now this part right here, a lot of ways you could do it. I'm gonna draw a rectangle and I'm gonna go ahead and make it thicker, four points. And this is kind of a, a neat little trick here. We want to work with this. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to, for just a second, I'm going to ungroup this. So I can use the boundary tool. And now I got a boundary. I'm going to move it over and down. And then I'm going to take my rectangle and then you'll see why I did that in just a second. Now I'm going to set my rectangle kind of like right there. That's pretty good it'd almost be worth to go into the center of the page, but you could always center on there, then start moving and hold down the control button. Then I'm gonna to go to object and convert it to a curve. I'm gonna take the nodes. I'm gonna select all the nodes. I'm gonna right click and convert them to curves. And then that way I can move individual nodes around, kind of giving a little bit of a bow look. Uh, and you could spend a lot of time making it even. But this is why I wanted that shape. And now I'm gonna take the virtual segment delete key and delete that. Now, because we haven't moved our nudge factor, that's gonna nudge right up to it. If you didn't do that, you'd have to be cutting through all these lines to cut that. And you could still change it from here, you know, move this down lower. Uh, you just want to make it not look uh, symmetrical or uh, uniform, just like right here, you could still play around with this guy. Uh, you know, it's a mother nature shell. They did a little bit better job. They got a lot rounded corners. And then there's several things you could do if you were gonna engrave this with some shading or, you know, different things. Um, anyway, I personally would probably take that clip art and just read and try to uh, trace that clip art. But, you could make your own. I hope that helped a little bit. Thank you for watching.